Hello and welcome to part 6 of my tutorial sessions. In this session we're going to finish our modelling. Um, I don't know how long this is going to take but what I'm going to do is I'm going to very quickly make us a phone. Now I was thinking about doing an old fashioned phone then I thought well an Apple Mac next to an old fashioned telephone in a hotel room is a little bit contradictory so what we're going to go for is we're going to go for sort of just a, an iPhone that will be buzzing on the desk uh, and your choice will be between the two, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to very, very quickly model ourselves a little iPhone. Now I'm going to I'm going to cheat really and just uh, basically model it using the texture a little bit like you would in games. Um, but I'm not going to use just a simple box like you would before. I'm going to use a chamfer box more for the fact that I want you guys to get used to using uh, different objects. So. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to come up here to chamfer box, which is obviously under extended primitives, so not standard primitives, but extended primitives. And in top viewport, I'm going to model myself uh, um, a sort of iPhone shape. So let's look at something a bit like that. Let's make it a little bit tall. I'll have a look at that in a minute. And let's round the edges off a little bit like that. Okay. Now, as you remember from before, we press Alt Q to uh, zoom in on something. Alt Q, okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this view to perspective viewport. Okay, let's zoom in on that object. Right, that is one chunky iPhone. I think Steve Jobs would uh, be rather disappointed if he thought the iPhone had got that fat. So what we'll do is we're going to make it a little bit wider, quite as tall, and the height. Let's merge that right down. How are we looking at? Oh yeah, rotate doesn't work on a screen grab. I seem surprised by that every time. So let's have a quick look. Like that. Right, not too bad, not too bad. So essentially, there's my iPhone shape. Now I could add some buttons and whatnot onto the side of it, um, but for this I'm, I'm really not going to. Uh, I could add the little buttons uh, on the side but I'll, I'm just going to add all the detail in with the texture. Okay, So what we're going to do, a little bit like we've done before, is we are going to um, UVW map this. So the way we do that is we come up here to modify, we go scroll all the way down and we want to unwrap our UVW. Okay, And just like before, this is good practice, you go to polygon mode, control A, I've highlighted everything excuse me, go UVW editor and then get this horrible mess come up. So I go to mapping, flatten mapping, OK, I want to flatten that, um, very nice, OK, so what I'm going to start doing is stitching some of this together, now hopefully you remember how to do this, but I'm going to say stitch this button, right, so let's first and find out which one the front face is. So that's the front. Right, so I know this is the back of the case. Right, so the bit I really care about is the front. So let's have a look. The bit that you're going that the camera is going to be able to see is going to be this, 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 probably that, that, that. Okay, so essentially this whole part here. Is going to be what the camera sees, okay? So I can move this right, by pressing on this option. I can move this nicely off the canvas just for now. Obviously, I can turn that off so I can see a little bit better. Now, what I want to do, I come into line mode and I'm going to start stitching. I'm going to turn that off actually. I'm going to go to line mode and I'm going to start stitching. So click on the side, stitch, click on the side, and stitch. Click on the top and stitch, click on the bottom and stitch. All very repetitive. Right, where do these parts go? They go up here, I should imagine. Yep, okay. So, the way in which I'm going to do that is one, well, I'm going to just select all these little faces here. He says, this control button doesn't seem to be working. Uh, yep, and we can start stitching those around, okay. Uh, stitch there and there. Oh well, I might just do that. I'm a bit of a cheat. Okay, let's undo that. That wasn't quite what I was looking for. Right, one, two, three. Your refresh rate will probably be a lot better than this. Mine just seems to be taking ages to show me what is highlighted because I'm screen recording. Okay, right, I might just select those for now. Yeah, let's unhighlight that. I don't want that one. Unhighlight that. Hold it all. Um, 
obviously last time around I just did this and then showed you what I'd done afterwards but a lot of you seem to get lost so I'm just going to have a look at that for now stitch that on ok not too bad I'll do the same here obviously it's not the end of the world if you don't stitch them but I just want to tidy things up so I'm going to stitch it all up uh, let's just do those there stitch those on <clears throat> don't worry too much if the mesh is a little bit warped we can correct that in a sec ok one, two, three, four, five. Oops. those don't seem to be taking <laughs> when it catches up with itself they should highlight or not apparently Last but not least, we'll do one, two, three, four, five, and we'll do six for luck. Right, there you go. Okay, so, very nice. I've got a few little bits left. Where do these go? Okay, so we just want to tidy these last bits up. Let's click on those two. He says, blimey. Right, I want those two highlighted. Stitch there. Those two highlighted. Stitch there. Oop. Can't do that. Let's have a look. Where's this one go? It goes in there as well. So let's highlight one, two, three. Don't worry too much about how this mesh is looking right now. I mean, this bottom part essentially is only going to be black in colour anyway. Where does that go? Right, let's stitch to there. No, good job. Alright, then I've got this part. So let's stitch it to there. And that would leave what, that part there. Brilliant. Right, everything's attached. Okay. Right, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to tidy up this little bit of mesh a little bit. So I've come down into vertex mode. Highlight all my vertexes. I'm going to go tools, relax. I'm going to change this top one to face angles. I'm just going to leave all these for now and I'm just going to start relax and you'll see the mesh changes ever so slightly. Just press apply and close that down. And these are now no longer sort of intersecting or anything like that. Okay, they're on top of one another. But what I can do as well is I could I could tidy this mesh up now if I wanted. So I could go into edge mode. I could start stitching these bits together uh, if needs be. So for example, let's click on where does that link to? Well, to be fair, that could link to there and stitch that up. Well, we won't worry too much about that, okay? Because this, this whole part's going to be black anyway, so... Right, front, back, happy days. Let's repack that in there. Nice. Looks about the same size. So we know this one is going to be the top one, this one... And this is going to have our iPhone face on it, and this is just going to be black in colour. So, as before, we go tools, render UVW, uh, we go to turn seam edges off, which are these green lines, you won't see them. Render UVW template. Up it pops. Save. Uh, and we're just going to call it um, iPhone UVW. Now calling this an iPhone is a bit of a, you know, a bit cheeky, seeing as I haven't really done any modelling to it whatsoever. But in the, you know, in the essence of time being of the limit, I'm really going to uh, really going to rush this through. So iPhone UVW, we're going to save that. OK, close, close, close. Now we're going to go and open Photoshop. So Photoshop shall appear in my screen in but a second. Right, so here we are in Photoshop. Uh, let's now put our iPhone image in. So we go place. And what I've done is I've found an iPhone PNG. PNG meaning that there is no white background. It's just the image itself. So here it is. It's come in. What I'm going to do is hold shift and rotate that. Obviously, if I'd set my, my UVW up so that it was... Um, completely flat. I mean, so that it was at the right angle, it would have probably been a bit easier, but I didn't. So let's place my iPhone over it. Obviously, I want to get the proportions as close as I can. Now, you'll be able to see as I didn't accurately measure my iPhone when I modelled it, my proportions are slightly out. Mine's a bit too chubby. 
Okay, so I quite like something like that. I might make it a little bit bigger. Right. <laughs> so just just to clarify again, I never promised this was going to be a perfect iPhone, but it's going to do the job for what we want it for. Okay, especially in the time limit we have. Now I'm going to make a new layer, put it under my iPhone one. Uh, I'm going to change my fill color to black. And I'm going to paint bucket drop in black color. Okay, so if I wanted, I could sort of match up my black exactly the same. Make sure it was the same. Now I could make this sort of a shiny color. Uh, obviously, essentially what I'm doing is covering over this back part and any of the side parts that I've missed um, with a similar color of black. Now, so the buttons and that on the sides is going to ever so slightly different. But let's just see what this looks like. Uh, it might look rubbish, <laughs> but we'll go save as. Actually, just before I do that, let's move that down. There was such a fraction there. That's a bit better because I was cutting the top bit off of it. So now I'll go save as. Save it as. I'm going to just save it as a JPEG. I'll just save it as iPhone uh, text. Just have texture. Press save. OK. And let's open up 3ds Max again, shall we? There we go. All right, bring up the material editor with M on your keyboard. Find yourself a nice blank texture. There you go. So find that blank texture. And what we're going to do is we're going to add this texture. So empty box next to defuse. Click and wait for that to load. Then when that loads, as you're all well aware, we choose bitmap. Uh, we navigate to where it's saved, iPhone texture, compile that texture, show what it looks like. Oh, I have a really, really amazing looking uh, iPod. Nevertheless, still looks cool. I've got myself my iPod, okay? So, let's close that material editor. Alright, the seam edges might not be perfect, but from a distance, the size that it's going to be, that's going to look perfect for what I need, okay? So, we need to position this now, so I'm going to I'm gonna keep it selected, but I'm going to press Alt and Q to go back to my original view. Okay, can't see anything because of where my camera is, so let's just zoom out a little bit. Alright, there we go. Mm, we'll zoom out massively, apparently. Right, I set my camera angle, just press C on my keyboard. I've got two cameras, so I'm going to choose camera two. Now let's place that phone on that table somewhere so I can do that in this viewport. Place that there. I might do a scale that up ever such a fraction. Like so. Okay, we'll place that sort of facing that way. And we'll pop that well away so that when I make the hot point, it's very clear there's two different objects okay so I've got my two objects in the scene I might quickly change perspective press Z. let's just make sure when I scaled it I didn't want the text or anything okay I forgot about the rotating and then like, that's cool okay that works as an iPhone I'll do that let's choose my second right. camera right okay uh, last thing I want to do I noticed when I rendered before that my light was a little bit too bright still I think I need to make this far moodier so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to check my light settings again so I'm going to come up here like we did in the last lesson I've only got one light in the scene so I'm going to press on it press OK to select it now I know that my light's highlighted and I didn't have to navigate for it Let's just check I set it up alright so yeah I've still got mental ray on mental ray shadows shadows still turned on that's still enabled everything's good so all I need to do is intensity color I'm going to turn that right down and I know before I said don't go more than 0.2 uh, 0.5 but I'm going to try I might half it Actually, why not? I'm going to go 1.75. What I'm going to do is I'm going to render one frame, pause the video, and then show you what my final modeled scene looks like, okay? So, I shall render the final frame now. Okay, so here's my final render. I won't lie, it's not my favourite bit of work I've ever done, but it will work for the purpose of what we're trying to do, okay? We could put another plane in here, like copy this plane and turn it into glass to get like a reflection on the screen uh, using a glass... Um, texture that we sort of spoken about in lesson before uh, that would be quite a good idea the iPhone looks average at best I'm still not really happy with the shadows I know I said I wanted a horrible wallpaper uh, and my carpet this time around doesn't look wonderful but hey ho we're gonna move on and we're just gonna animate this because time is of the essence so let's make this into a looping um, hot point game okay